Well, kia ora, everybody, and welcome to Mount Smart Stadium number two on a pretty gloomy Auckland day. But it's a great day for rugby league, no matter what the weather is, because this is a big game. It is the Premier Boys Grand Final in the Auckland College Rugby League for 2022. We've got two very good teams here, De La Salle College and uh, also St Paul's College, a perennial finalist here on the number two ground at Mount Smart Stadium. Yes, two cracking teams. Glenn Lama is my name. TJ Ashford is with me. You know many of these players, TJ. What do you think? What, are we going to have a good game today? Yeah, these these two teams are stacked heavily with with a fair bit of talent there, Glenn. So, uh, yeah, again, weather's probably not the best to, to be expansive today, and uh, so whoever's going to hold on the ball and um, complete their sets and play at the right end of the field is probably going to come out uh, on top today. Well, it's going to be a cracking contest. There is no doubt about that. St Paul's have a uh, bunch of good players, and their captain, AJ Jones, number 13, uh, is already in the Tigers system in Sydney uh, TJ, just tell me a little bit about him because he's a very good player. Yeah, he's been in the Tiger system for a fair bit at the moment. So um, I, I know he flew over earlier on in the year to play uh, an SG ball game and um, found the speed quite quick over there when he went over. And um, obviously he's getting an opportunity this Sunday as well. I believe you're calling it as well as we see the De La Salle line up. Yeah, here. have a look at that. Tell, tell, tell us about this team. Uh, Fatih Lofa immediately comes to mind, the grandson of the late Peter, uh, number three. Yep. And uh, Motu Tony's son, Malakai, number nine. A yeah, couple of key players. Yeah, there's quite a few players um, scattered in both of these teams that played in our under-16s. Sean Johnson's sh Shield and Dean Bell Cup, uh, under-18s Dean Bell Cup at the start of the year. Um, but again, you know, high caliber of representative players on both sides in this grand final. Yes, Kalis Fatialofa, number three, a 2022 Junior Warriors Invitational Touring Squad. We're going to see him playing for the future Warriors on uh, Sunday in the second row, in fact. Uh, let's have a look at the St. Paul's 11. We've touched on AJ Jones, number 13. And Kali uh, is another highly regarded player, the head boy of the school. Uh, Piliu is Piliu. the captain. Uh, and Zach Stevenson, number eight. Keep your eye on him too. I hear he's got some real talent. Yeah, again, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, number one captain uh, William Pillier can do. He captained the under-18s Warriors touring side at the start of the year. and um, He's a good player, very quick and, and very strong. So look for him to uh, lead his team to victory today. Indeed. So two teams not too far away. So here come the two teams, St. Paul's College. No Kelston this year. Of course, with that Southern Cross in recent years as well. Um, been right up there as well. But uh, De La Salle College, good to see them back. And they've got a good coach too with a, uh, uh, with a big rugby league pedigree. George Carmont, the former Newcastle player. Yeah, I actually, um, have quite a few years ago now, I was, I was playing a uh, Pacific Cup team and he'd come down to help out coaching there. And I think that might have been his first coaching gig was George. And uh, he's done well. He spent a few years at Otahu in the Premier Grade there as well as one of the head coaches. And obviously he's a De La Salle boy, so it's good for him to come back and, and give back to his, uh, his old school. Yeah, it's really cool, isn't it? And uh, St Paul's coached by Frank Fui Maono. Yeah, uh, Frank, oh, he's, he's, he's been um, uh, in the system for quite a while now. and uh, He's coached a couple of our representative teams and... I actually coached against him on the weekend. Uh, his, his team touched me up. but This is Point Chef. Um, this is Point Chef, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's, a, he's the premier coach there at Point Chef. And yeah, he's, uh, he goes by the name Seth. But yeah, Seth, Seth's an awesome bloke to have around. And, and obviously he'll have these boys well drilled today. Well, indeed. And it's a big uh, big game. A lot of prestige in this game. And there's a lot of eyes on it. You know, I can tell you, not too far away from our commentary position uh, right here is Tony Edel from the Warriors and a few other eagle eyes just to the left of us here, uh, TJ as well, who are very keenly going to be casting their eye on this game. Yeah, they will do. Um, and, and a lot of it is because a lot of their boys will be playing this Sunday as well, um, which is that Curtin Razor game to the Vodafone Warriors at Mount Smart. I believe their kickoff's at one one thirty um, this week. And uh, it'll be a good opportunity for these boys to, to get a little bit of oxygen in their lungs and um, get a little bit of a head out before this weekend's game. So here come the two teams now. Going to be very interesting to see. I was actually worried. I was watching the boys warm up, Glenn, and um, if any of you guys know De La Salle's uh, home kit, this is uh, identical. Other than the gold, is, mm. it's like a light blue colour, so it's going to be hard to call and 
a few mind games played there, I think, because I've gone on the sheds and changed into their away kit. So, um, yeah, as, as the boys are led out by two of the Junior Warriors boys, Kalis Fatilofa and William Piliu. Yeah, looking forward to this game, that's for sure. There are some seriously good talent in these two teams. And, uh, of course, good kick-off time of 4 o'clock. Uh, that grandstand over the far side is quite well populated. Yeah, starting to fill up now. With, uh, hopefully, can be packed out with both... Uh, School students just uh, jumping on a bus and making their way down to the ground here. Of course, this is a famous rugby league school, the St Paul's College. We had uh, Bunty R4, of course, go through the school. We've got Christian Tuipulotu going through the school. He played for Tonga uh, against the Kiwis just last Saturday. And, uh, well, maybe the most famous of all the students, uh, Stacey Jones, the Warriors coach at the moment. Exactly. I think we might have a hucker here too, Glenn. So De La Salle with their haka. We're just getting set here. Oh, I'm 
That's right, number two. Oh, that was a lovely touch at the end there. With, uh, just wondered whether it was getting a little bit over the top there, a little heated, but... Yeah, uh, a few of these boys playing a bit too so they all know each other, but... Um, Play for your schools. Sometimes get a little bit heated, but, but there we are. Nice embraced there by the two number 15s. So Sefo for St Paul's and Sua Bacon for De La Salle. So we're all set for kickoff. 25 minute half. So uh, again, it's it's short and sweet for the league at this age group. And, uh, doesn't leave a lot of time, does it? Come back into the game. No, it doesn't. And, uh, he's got scored off. Uh, I think in round one, I believe, of this, this season's kickoff. And there's only a two point contest in that game. Well, who won? Uh, St. Paul's, I think it was 1816, I believe, or something close like that. So, uh, and I believe it might have been 18 mil at one stage. But it's going to be a close encounter here today, I think. Right, so here we are, De La Salle in the white and St Paul's in the maroon. It is the grand final of the 2022 Rugby League College competition. It's going to be De La Salle to kick off. Spent some fireworks in the early stages of this contest. Let's get it on and look at that defence straight away from De La Salle. Laumia is right into the thick of the action. St Paul's walking away from the 20. Slotting into dummy half for St Paul's is Felipe Palisau. Now here comes Hietau. The rangy back rower has a rugby union background. So you'll see a lot of league instincts as Jones comes forward now, and here's a good little dart from dummy half from Felipe Palisau. Oh, over the halfway line now. Good early set here, good start to St Paul's as Jones plays it out, and, and now De La Salle have their hands on the ball for the first time. Yeah, good opening set here by uh, St Paul's College. Um, and let's see if uh, De La Salle can muscle up here for their first set on attack. So look at that line, that defensive line coming up from St Paul's. It's very quick, isn't it? Tanoa E and also Fayumu was coming forward for St Paul's. The tackle coming in from Zach Stevenson. Big change of scenery for the number one for La Salle as well. It's still a Felipe. Actually, a lock forward, playing 13 in that role. So, obviously, with a few older boys, uh, very talented kids, able to play a few positions. Let Mamiya's kick. He found touch just inside the 30. Rambo there backing up. Coming around today. Enjoy a, uh, a nice warm drink tonight, and he deserves it too. Yeah, he does weather out there and here's AJ Jones all the talk about him he's in the Tigers system but that wasn't the only NRL club interested in him Paul's wearing the headgear here is Seal Kali. He's in the Warriors system as he just just over the halfway line. Coming in from St. Paul's from Tanoa E again and back goes Filippo. Up in front of his own right, so the excellent field position. Always good pinning a team in the corner as we've seen St. Paul's do there. And now if they can just lure an error out of De La Salle, they'll back themselves to score the first points. It's missing new. And now here comes Tavai, who's smashed inside his own 10. So De La Salle just struggling to touch here to get it out of their danger zone. There's Fatia Lofa. Oh, he's made a clean break here, almost. And in fact, it's Filippo, isn't it? This, uh, this Fatih Lofa, yes. He's flirting with the sideline there, just a touch. Lima Mia again, and now comes De La Salle. Fatih Lofa here, that, this grandson of Peter Fatih Lofa. And he goes to kick from Herbert Lotza. 
Three players back there for St. Paul's. Now, the set of starter by Antonio and Albert Jr. Into dummy half for Lippi Tully Sal again. Good run coming from Cully. Tully Sal, another in the Warriors system. Number nine for St. Paul's. He goes to fullback, the head boy of St. Paul's Collegiate. Liu, inside ball to Sua. The tackle coming in though from Malakai Tony, the son of Motu. Yep. And here comes the kick again. Manole Mamiya, or rather from uh, Tonoa'i. Nice late offload there. It's been a bit of an arm wrestle in these first five minutes. Yeah, the so far it's been an era free game too, which is good to see. Greasy conditions of course in this game. We see good standard of basic play, don't we? Once these players. Some Elu, it is. Robust. Run from the number 13 for De La Salle. Mami, a short ball. It was a good one to Tupulo to Vea. Nice option taken by De La Salle. They've got a better field position here. There's a kick and chase. Bounce is pretty awkward there, but in the end, it's been who tidies up. But there's a penalty. Some inaccurate running. But even though that's ended in a penalty there, TJ, it was a pretty decent set from De La Salle. Yeah, it was. Again, um, a little sneaky kick over there. The bounce almost beat him if that was the right position. Probably goes in the hands of the Kalis there. But um, as we see, a few players uh, there's a good mix, as you are well aware, of at Point Chev at the moment, of some very good young players there, maybe three or four in there, but some really hardened, experienced players. Go on, go on. Go on, keep pushing in. Yes! Zach Stevenson, Manu Rewa Marlins Jr. You know all about him. Yep, it's unfortunate, but um, again, I've got some good defensive policies. St. Paul, so expect him to tidy that area up there shortly. Look at that, you can see on the replay, he just lifted his head looking at the defence, just that touch early. And took his eye off the ball, paid the price. So De La Salle here got a scrum right on the halfway line here. Franklin Manuele Mamia is going to feed it. So a good set here, and De La Salle will be close to the line now. Have a look at this guy here, Samuelu. He looks like he's got some post contact meters in him. Of, uh, good carries already. Get up, get up, get up. here sneaking up towards the Go, 20. Up, Just spread it a little bit wider of the ruck this time, but they do keep it tight now. Tackle coming in from Felipe Taliso again. So I'm into dummy half of the Malakai Tony. And now De La Salle move forward again through Tui Maunga. Tony again. Now Gilbert Lotsa. Carry from Sia Ossi. Lost it though. It's going to be St. Paul's ball. Disappointing end of that set there for De La Salle. Yeah, it was. If there's any positive out of there, they've turned it over the right end of the footy field. And if they can uh, muster up a little bit of More energy here in the offensive line, hopefully they get another opportunity down here shortly. But yeah, it's just probably um, you see the bit quite early too, but just had poor carry there. I don't think he tucked it in too well. Yeah. Carry, that's Absolutely. Game, like today. 100%. Been a pretty even start, though, hasn't it? No, neither team really willing to chance their own just at the moment? No, I, I, I was, just while we were warming up, or the boys were warming up there as well, I got a chance to speak with Seth Hall and asked him, you know, if we were, we were in today, we didn't think he's got to be one, and he said, get me through the middle, and um, 
I said, what are some of your strengths? And he went and said, they'll be able to go up to those things. They the same books. Uh, and things like I said, I'll normally, you know, the likes of Army, um, um, but the boys are in that team. He's a very expensive player, but some good skills on him as well. So, now the ruck speed on this set has been very good so far. Here's St Paul's with a, a good surge up field. Good tackle coming in from Filippo though. Stops that one just from the moment though, but the ruck speed is good again. St Paul's have an opportunity. Nicely done. There was a good tackle coming in from Missy New for De La Salle. Over. So in the end, that was a really good set by St Paul's. They've gone 80 metres there. Some really good play the balls, but De La Salle's defence was up to it. Yeah, well, they probably took the wrong option here as well. Going wrong, I probably would have plucked a little bit more um, around the, the ruck. Uh, again, they've shown their hand here. They've got some nice Ball handling is going to have to be secure again here as they bring the ball out from their own end. Fatih Alofa. So, Come on, Fatih. Oh, here comes some of you again. Tony. Really a shame that count this time here, but was an attacking kick. Bounce has gone pretty well there for De La Salle. And in the MPU at the back there for St. Paul's has gathered. Not a bad option. To kick just over that first defensive line. Yeah, Harley's got that play on two minutes. He's, 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 like I said, very expensive. He's a very skillful player at the same time. So, he's a little bit more in this game. just flopping there, so there's not going to be a penalty there. And here comes... Akaulu, who's just met fiercely there by some pretty decent tackling. So Sefo is on there now, number 15 there for De La Salle. Penalty is going to go the way of St Paul's here. Yeah, much needed there. It's going to be a good opportunity for, to see what St Paul's have got. Here they go, keep the side. De La Salle half. One shot up the horse. Yeah, just initial high contact. Yeah, actually, that was a good shot there, but I think it was the next tackle. It was uh, the problematic one there for De La Salle. So, William Biliu. Touch. Yes, he will. So, here's St. Paul's. 30 out, full set of six. Yeah, big opportunity for them to score some. Uh, we'll get on the board first here in this contest. But, again, look for De La Salle College to uh, put a little bit of sting in their defence. Stack on for it with the first carry. They're going to keep it plugging on that left-hand side. Piatau. Marco Piatau. Got a good build for a back rower on him, hasn't he? Here's Jones. Playing lock forward. Getting close now, St. Paul's. Halfway through the set. Ruck speed's good. Now here's a chance. But it's Piatau going very close. Not going to get that over the line. Lippi Taliso at dummy half. Yeah, it's number 20. We don't have his number here with us, Glenn, but that's number 20. We'll try and get that name for you. We'll get that name for you. Yeah, hopefully, maybe it's just a juicy change for one of the players that we've already got. Here's a, a little dab at the line. Well, the player's over. I think he scored the try. Yeah, good try scored by St. Paul's there. It's Kian Mafoy who's gone over to score the try. Well, it was a real nippy run there from the halfback, and there is the first score of the game. Yeah, great try by the number seven there, Marfoy. Just took an opportunity, and De La Salle went to sleep there around the ruck, and uh, again, first attack and set on the try line, Glenn, and they've come away with the first pass for today. So Marfoy, the score, Mangari East Junior, and... Uh, yeah, he just took advantage just for a moment there of that defensive line that just got a little bit sluggish. He still had some work to do there. Yeah, he did. Uh, and he's beaten a decent uh, defender there as well. Um, and that was uh, Rodney Tupulitik there. So, he's beaten some good defenders there to get to the try line and open the points going for uh, St. Paul's College. Hey, move up. So here is the conversion attempt. Nice handy position. So six points 
close to nil is the score. That was number one for the blue, they got that conversion. Another player that's uh, going to be winding up in the under 18s, got up on one of his side um, on Sunday as well. I believe he's playing fullback in that game. Restart, restart, restart. To Rudo here with the team for that game. He's the captain, he's actually the captain yeah. of that game. So we've got uh, Seal Kali playing in that game too. There's two there. This uh, Fatilov is going to play in the second row. Rodney Veer is on the interchange. And he's playing for De La Salle in this game. So there's a few there. And Philippe Tulliso is there too, as well, the hooker for um, for the uh, St Paul's team. So we've got four or five in there. Because this player here is going to play for the Tigers yeah, against the Warriors. The opposition, yeah. So it's going to be a good contest for him. Uh, this weekend playing against some of his, uh, his schoolmates and always in his play for that club level. Uh, a couple of other players that uh, we're going to look forward to keeping our eye on too. Ali Lawa, uh, Lea Tawa is playing in that game too. Uh, we've seen him go, play go, for New Zealand 18s in the last couple on, of years. See, see. He's in the Warriors system too. And uh, Jacob Laban. Yeah, I'm, 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 ex I'm excited to watch him play as well. Um, play with big reps coming through the system there. And, uh, currently applying his trade um, over in, I believe, the Dolphin system uh, while the Warriors are still playing over there. So um, he's one that I'm definitely uh, keen to go watch on Sunday. Good to see these guys play as the kick goes in there and the good set has been completed there by St. Paul's. And uh, once again, De La Salle, a long way from the where they want to be. This rugby league sometimes got the hard yards to do. You see a couple of interchange players come on. See you, it was playing the ball there. And now Fatih Lofa, nice hands. The hands. And here comes Twipolo Kuvea. To Dami Half now, Sikavia. Got some space here. And if they can spread it here, draw and pass a little bit. St. Paul's have drifted quite well in defence. And that's, that's going to slide into touch. That's the upper Ulu. Rather, uh, actually, who's that? I think it might be Mutton Nelson over on that right wing yeah, side. Yeah, just sure. Yeah, just poor, poor catch and pass there too by um, De La Salle. Obviously, uh, the winger there had to reach behind to grab the ball, but uh, a bit better there, a bit of expansion, high, high, high pressure environment there, but um, all balls been played. <laughs> We've had a few of those ones today. But yeah, a bit of pressure there by um, St. Paul's Coles. They, they obviously turned the ball 20. over at the right end of the field at the moment. And, um, yeah, putting a bit of pressure into T. Lassell and they've just lost the wheel. So a big contact. Feeling the full front of that was Francis Antonio. St. Paul's winger. Carly looking for some hard metres out of dummy half. and makes about six or seven there. Some good defence by De La Salle. He gives the yeah. kick from the try scorer Mafoy. Nicely back in position. If a couple of those players might have been ahead of the kicker there too for a second there, TJ. Yeah, I think William Pillou got called there uh, for being offside as we see. Nice little short side play. I need to stay away from that sideline. They've gone into touch a few times already in this game. You see, he's a good hard charge under the line from Fakir Lofa. Hit break. Get it to sunshine. Strong is Kalis. Fatih Lofa. Now Filippo with that kick. It's always good to find the grass. Yeah, very good kick. Good, good kick chase here by De La Salle as well. Few. It is coming up towards the 30 meter line. Kapulu. It is playing in a second grand final. I think there's two or three. Players backing up for some portion last year's final as well. Zapiliu over the, over the uh, halfway line. This will surge by the fullback. Tie in, Junior, tie in. Get those legs. Jones. Get those legs. Now, yes. into the gamers. Palanga. Welcome to the, the game as Jones fires it out to Mafoy. Coming back again is Piatel. Good, isn't he? Pietel, like the look of him. Yeah, he's got a good frame on him, Glenn, and he's uh, taken some good carries so far in this contest. He's moving hard to tackle. Here comes St. Paul's looking hungry for their second try. Draw and pass. Should go close here. 
Just missed that up a little bit there, St. Paul's. Probably should have done a bit better there. Right at the stretch of that play. And it's going to be De La Salle ball. Yeah, they've missed an opportunity there. I, I thought that was play on. I know they've, they've corrected it there. Knock on? Yeah, there's a knock on. Restarted play, yeah, it should be um, St. Paul's College ball. But yeah, just close to that trial. Line. Good covered defence here by Kalis Matilofa. And uh, probably need to get a little bit lower into contact there. Just drive low with the legs. Filippo, reaching out with the ball. Turn that on. Full so set here for St. Paul's. 10 metres out from Jones. You can tell us so. Is That's a part of Sua. Sua. He's getting close. Yeah, part of our um, under 16s, Tom Kiki Tiraki team, and uh, Sean Johnson Shield this year. This is Cousins also in the team, too. Kasaya. Felipe Talisau with St. Paul's. Hold on attack here. Hungry for their second try. Going close was Kanoa'i. Marcel's defence is going to have to be watertight here. Can they hold out Jones? Here goes Felipe, Felipe Tully. So did he get there? He's short. Jones is there at dummy half. Is it to Mafoy? Now Piliu cutting back on the angle. Mafoy, good support by the halfback. Here's Piatau. Now it's looking good here for St. Paul. Beautiful offload. What a try. The offload from Seol Kali was absolutely superb. And there is a second try for St. Paul's. Francis Antonio, I believe, for that one. Uh, what about that offload from Seol Kali? Yeah, a good, he's, a, he's a powerful runner, just like his younger brother we saw here in, in one of today's finals. But again, they must have been put short numbers because you, you saw that try saving tackle yeah, while on the try line there, and there was about four or five foot in the tackle. Um, but great skill shown there by Antonio as well. Getting down nice and low early, making it hard for that uh, cover tackle to come across there. And uh, he's got it down for his first four pointer for today as well. well. That offload, I can't speak highly enough of that. That was, uh, he was surrounded by three players there. Especially in, in traffic as well with wet conditions. Great start. Very good try. The uh, salient supporters in the crowd there. You can hear the boos as uh, he runs up for the kick. Oh, this one's a much tougher kick completely than the first one. Great try by Antonio. Some good lead up work, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Great kick. It's, it's going to be big in the context of today's game, too, man. You know, getting the sideline conversion like that in these conditions. So. A uh, good start here for St. Paul's. Um, they've been in some good field position the last couple of minutes. As you can see the strike here by uh, fullback William Piliu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least he's acknowledging that the supporters are there, man. Uh, there's no better feeling than getting some stick from the sideline. And yeah, of course, not doing the job right if you're not getting it. Exactly. So, good job ahead of De La Salle. And it's just the execution, I think, at the moment. It's a slight difference between the two teams, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. Um, but it's, it's where St. Paul's are turning the ball over as well. You know, every time um, La Salle are getting their, their, their ball, it's, it's from inside their own 20. So it's a good, good opportunity for them, hopefully, to muscle up in the defence as we see an error here. And they've got to be hot on the attack, uh, probably for the first time in a long time in this game. Yeah, Piatel was under some serious defensive issues there. Off the ball up. So now De La Salle have excellent field position. What a chance for them to strike back here. Can they do it though? Are they able to really squeeze through Samielu? It's down towards the 10. I yeah, actually look, like the look of them too. As we see a penalty here, another repeat set. But he's taken some tough carries already today, Jim. And looks promising. He's you know, obviously got a half break in each of those carries as well and gets a quick play to them. D. Now Filippo. Straight away, here's a charge at the line by Shinota Langa. It's just a couple of metres out. As we see Sikovia go close. Is he there? In fact, saw one of his teammates absolutely convinced he was there, but the try's not been given. 
give it another try. Oh, oh, no, no, no. No. He's still got it. Covered. It's gone backwards, so... We see Mew. I was just about to say too, Glenn, if you, you can't quite... Oh, you might be able to see it off camera there as we see Kayla stick a run from dummy half. But um, DSL College is just real flat at the moment on attack, so not giving them many options to, to run with, with any players or any structured plays, but hopefully they can get a bit of shape and a bit of attack. They've got a full set here again. And it's an important time to score too as we approach the last minute of the first half. So this is really going to be crucial here for De La Salle. 12 6, 12 4 is a lot better than 12 0. Yeah, they go short side here. They've got a fair bit of um, line up here to the right hand side. Deeper to Vea. Still a couple of metres out. So far, some pulls. Defence has been solid. Marcel swinging it, looking for a bit of space out on this right sheet for Lipo. Oh, it's been coughed up there, but it's still in the hands of Filippo. Definitely went backwards, so. This expansive play almost paid off for DRCL and check that offense out from St. Paul's. It's terrific. 20 seconds to go in this first half. There's Herbert Lotzer again. It's a great, great defensive line running there from St. Paul's. And there's another penalty that's been given. Is it should be set, to, set for 10 here? That's because of the back-to-back back, uh, back indiscretions, but it's been four penalties on their trial line now. Faliono is the player who's been simbin. What are you going to do here, Glenn? Last play. Are you tapping and running, or are you taking two points taking off the, off? I think they're going to take the two. Now, what's the deal here? They are going to take the two. Interesting call. So, DSL taking the two points. We'll make it that one, TJ. Yeah, it, it, it's tough, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's, it's it's pretty close to the uprights there, so it's pretty much a, a two point. Um, you can see a little bit of conflict there between the two number sixes. It should get heated before half time, but yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I think the two points are okay. Um, they were down to 12 men though, so have one shot maybe. Uh, could have had an opportunity to, to score a try there. Exactly. So 10 minutes basically. It's going to be a full 10 minutes in the second half. We're St. Paul's will be down to 12 players. Interesting call here. It's going to be missed. He's missed it. Well, that is a bad well, miss go. there from Manu Lee Mamiya. I've put the uh, marker on him, but... Great half of four half for you at the moment. It is at half time. It is St. Paul's that had the advantage. The lead by 12 points to nil. If you're all past the ball, put your best in. Enjoy your day's trip, you cover your selection. It's the thing that you've been missing. Oh boy. Don't play
even uh, I've done three. I've done camera three on twelve as well, Chris. I, I've done um, twelve on. Is that all right on three? That's twelve. So it is half time here. St Paul's Collegiate leading De La Salle College by twelve points to nil. Two tries scored in the game so far for St. Yeah, Paul's three look. Mafio and also it's Antonio well, have uh, scored the tries. Okay. And De La Salle just haven't had the opportunities and that's the tail of Mafio's try. A good little burst from him about 10 metres out where he shrugged off a couple of tacklers to go over and score the first try. Yeah, it was a nice little run by the number yeah, seven there. Ball, uh, yeah. Obviously, it's just on a heavy weighted of field position. Uh, for the St. Paul's College team and they played the um, you know played the footy at the right end of the field in this first half and obviously it's paid dividends. So we see a nice little off right there from Seal Cully to lead up for the Seal try. Yeah, it's terrific offload in front. It's Tony Orr went over to score in the end it's fairly simple for him to go over and score that try but he still want to score it and both goals both tries converted by Piliu they might that might be critical in these wet conditions too TJ yes yeah, it's, it's been a contest I believe um, yeah I think as you saw um, last year had a kick right in front there to uh, put two points on the board just before half time and um, yeah, it's definitely going to be costly that one there so uh, they need a they need a muscle up here defensively, build a little bit of pressure, and probably not chase points too early. They need to grind himself back into the game, hopefully. Indeed, and the lovely dynamic twist that we've got coming for the first ten minutes of the second half is that De La Salle will be playing with one player advantage. But are they going to be good enough to capitalise? Sometimes we see they're not really proven to be much of a disadvantage. But of course, on the other side of the equation, of that is how's this team? St. Paul is going to handle being a player down. Yeah, correct. What, what will happen is if they can hold on to the ball a little bit last out, it means they can zap a little bit more juice out of the players that are coming on the field. Um, but the other, the other thing as well is, is last year, yeah, knowing that they're a man down, they can't try and shift the ball too wide too early. I still think they have to lay some uh, platform and play through the middle first and then open up and create some more space on the edges. And one thing they've been struggling to do is get good ruck speed. Play the ball speed has been a problem for De La Salle. If they can get that going in one or two sets here, TJ, then that could really open up and give them the advantage with that one player. Yeah, fully agree. Hey, just got to hold on to the ball, and you can see here they've, they've picked up the ruck speed a little bit and had two quick back-to-back -back play the balls, and um, they're already over halfway on play three. That's another pretty good one there as we see Samu Elu get over the halfway line. Burst by him again. Can they capitalise? Is not a great kick there, not a great option. And the two number sixes come together again. And Panoa all over his opponent there, Manuel Le Mamia. Yeah, it's been a bit of a uh, tight contest over there between the two number sixes, getting heated. Uh, but again, that's probably not the play as well, um, Glenn. You know, putting in that little grubber when you're on halfway line. And um, the crowd's getting a little bit vocal now, too. So there's a few big shots going on here. Jones rolls his sleeves up for a hard carry. The defensive line he goes. Mafoy got that first try. Here's Pelio again, kicking early in the count this time. Not a great kick that time. Quite simple catch there for Filippo. But you know, at least it pulls at the right end of the field. Yeah, I think that's that's what they're going to be playing at as well. You know, um, taking the early option there, kicking it down, uh, making sure they're, they're starting their sets inside their own 20. So good kicking option there by number one, William Pelio. Cuts and sets up a bit of time as well. It's off into the line was Fatia Lofa. Again, it's been lost and it's been picked up here by St Paul's. And the referee, though, has blown his whistle. So that is not going to be a score for the Akaulu. Yeah, good call by on field official and Kesha. Uh, Paul hit down there by St Paul's college player. Let's see who it was, but. Uh, look, 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 look. 25 minute halves so when we get that clock down to around about the 15 minute mark that's when we'll have some pulls back to their full quota yeah, you'd, if, if I'm last Sal you definitely want to try and put a, uh, at least one try on in this next 7 minute period but again I think they've got to stay patient they can't try and rush for points and um, you got to remember as well they're down to 12 which means they're zapping a lot more juice so Points might not come now, but they might come at the back end of the half. 
It's all part of the strategy. You do, Fadi Alofa. He's been tough, and that, that's one of his strengths as well, is how tough he is. But he's also um, quite quick on his feet as well. So we see a big shot there by the number six there for St. Paul's. Just Josiah Tanoya. He's done a great job again. Good, had this good carry, and a penalty this time again. Offside again. Some balls definitely need to be careful if they keep giving away penalties, especially inside their own half. Uh, on field official, official Kesha might be uh, forced to play his hand again with another Simbin. Now, this is interesting. He lost out with a full set inside the 30. <coughs> this is the time to strike, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Again, like I said, I, you know, especially when they're only defending the 12, they can't think that the space is automatically on the outside they still got to lay some platform and uh, like you said generate some ruck speed and play off the back of it here comes De La Salle to Sukavea here's a good carry coming in from Sua Bacon so here's De La Salle, another penalty another penalty Jones the captain Mr. Piliu Co-captains have got uh, good, very good leadership in this St. Paul's team. And now it's got to be a score, doesn't it, for De La Salle? Yeah, it has to be. But again, patience for, um, <laughs> you know, um, St. Paul's college, man. A, a couple more penalties like that. They'll be forcing the hand of the official. It's an offload. And that some, might space. some space. Oh, it's been knocked down, though, again by the winger. In fact, it's, it's play, play on. on. No way. Here goes Akaulu for St. Paul's. And Fatalov has got him. Kalis. Great show of speed there to bring him down. I think there was a the missed opportunity there. there. Yeah. Here's Antonio. They try in the first half. Mamia. Aggressive play again. So St. Paul's swing on to attack. There's Kelly. Made that second try, that magnificent offload. There's his hands on the ball. Lippi Taliso again. And now here comes Fala Ono. Lippi Taliso. Jones. Great. Almost uh, through his Tanoi E. Great again. line speed there by Herbert Lawza. Shutting down that play. They had an opportunity there to score points. And here comes Piliu. Piliu looking to create some space again. Good search at the line. I think he's there. St. Paul's have got another try. It is Sua. He's gone over to score it. Third try for St. Paul's. Let's call the try. Yes, yep. Oh, that is a turn of events, isn't it, TJ? Yeah, especially down the 12 men as well. Still putting a, a try on the board, but again, put that down to fullback William Pilliu. Just held up the defensive line there with a little bit of footwork. Changed his tempo close to the line and uh, just isolated that defender there and created some space. Here comes to try again. Oh, it's a good finish here from Sua. Yeah, a bit of work to do. Yeah, you just see that little, that last step he had there, he just straightened up a little bit and caught um, Kalis Vitiolofo just going at his inside shoulder and held him up enough just to free up his outside man. And great try there by St. Paul's College. Here's that Piliu again. And it is Sua going over to score the try. So 16 to nil. Pili has another tough conversion coming up here. What a, uh, what a turn of events here for De La Salle who were, who were right on attack and can see the try. Later, so that one's going to be waved away. So it remains 16 to nil. And effectively, a 12 point play to Glenn. You know, they're down the other end. There's like a three on one opportunity there, as you see, we can see on the camera there. Looked like it was knocked down, uh, but the golden rule play to the whistle. Um, De La Salle just clocked off a little bit there. And, uh, good little run. Kayla showed a good bit of pace. It was a great breakout there by Akaulu. Ron Akaulu. Well, now, if you 
really think De La Salle have a chance in the game. They can't let St. Paul score again. Yeah, it's, a, it's important they um, oh, That's another good carry there by St. Paul's. Is it a lost ball? Yes, there you go. That's the start they needed. The error has come from Richard Falaono. Playing in the second grand final for St. Paul's. A 12th student. So he could be back again next year. Yeah, he could be. No, and that's that thing I convey about of talent coming through at St. Paul's College. And, um, yeah, we saw the under, um, or their senior A side or under 15 nine side team, I think it was earlier today, you know, win that grand final. So they definitely got some youngsters coming through the system. So here comes that, that era. Fariano. So here's De La Salle. They really need to execute here. Fuck De La still trying his best. Ooh, flirting with that touchline. There's Kalis. Needs to stay in just. Oh, Filippo now, who you reckon's going to have to step up here for De La Salle to meet some magic here? Oh, a player that I don't think is touched the ball enough, which is the number seven, um, Harmi Herbert Rosa. He was one of the other co-captains for our Auckland 16 side. I know he's young, but uh, he's definitely got the talent to you know, carry this team on his back and bring them back into the game. But, um, they're just not holding on to enough ball. I think they're playing too sideways at the moment, Glenn. They need to play straight. And, um, they are generating some ruck, plays, uh, ruck speed when they do that, but again, they're just guilty of playing um, too sideways at the moment. Get up, get up, get up. Tupelo with that first carry. Here comes Kamutalanga again. Again, this defence from St Paul's has been very good, hasn't it? Been uh, very effective. You know, so much sneaking through. There's your man Herbert Lotsa getting, poking his nose through. Good fast play, the ball here. Here's a chance at the line from Mangale. And it's off. It's lost, yes. Dan Mangale just losing the ball there. Here it goes. Yeah. Get a Actually, yeah, another player that's uh, a youngster, a 15, yeah, played in our under 16s Auckland side that uh, toured up in North Island this year, and I think he, from memory, he won his forward as well. Um, Who's that, Mangele? Yeah, Mangele, yeah. yeah. We actually had two spots available um, late, which we were, we were trying to watch the nines, the national nines that went on, and um, him and a player that's uh, playing for St. Paul's, uh, Coughlin Purcell. Uh, filled up those last two spots that we had, and, and both of them were shining lights on that on that tour as well. Have you seen Purcell on the field yet? No, nah, not yet. Uh, traditionally a centre, but uh, another kid that's got some great um, talent. And again, 15 years old, still got plenty of opportunities uh, playing for school. Um, school, but hopefully he'll be in the future. Purcell, uh, number 14 for suppose if we do see him. He's just a year 11 student. Here's Jones. Johnson Cup this year did Purcell. Here is Peliu. So just good solid rugby league. Should get St. Paul's home here, but you just never know if a piece of individual brilliance can come out of one of these D-Lar Cell players. It's going to be hard to chase like that. Yeah, exactly. A good chase line. And again, it's another set where St. Paul's have turned the ball over inside the 20 metres here. So some hard yards required for D-Lar Cell. Again, St. Paul's smartly playing the game at the right end of the field. Working away beautifully in this game is Jericho Philippi, Philippi Talisau, number nine here for St. Paul's. He's doing a, having a very good game. Yeah, I believe he's a money deal product as well. Um, <laughs> he's actually, uh, he's playing yes. out of position, I believe. Um, he, he's traditionally, I've seen him at fullback. And, yeah, uh, I've, I've got a note here saying he's a centre learning to play hooker. Yeah, there you go, yeah. So he's normally an outside back. He has got a tail load of speed too. I have seen him in open space. Um, obviously wet conditions and probably doesn't suit him at the moment, but he's another kid uh, on the rise uh, coming through the system. Here at the Butterfly Warriors, I believe. Yeah, look, I think they're playing him at hooker because their normal hooker is not he's out for the season injured. Yeah, right. So uh, they've had to adapt. But you know, this is a, this is a cool thing about this sport, isn't it? I mean, he's going to he's going to take skill. So he's got a dummy half out of yeah, several games out back, maybe back out in the backs again. Yeah, gets a little bit of respect from his middle forwards as well. You know, sometimes middle forwards, as we see an error here by St Paul's. Yep, yeah, going to have an opportunity here, but. Yeah, like playing out of position like that, it's just a great skill, but good for his future development as well, obviously. And, um, you know, there's no better better way to learn how to catch and pass other than a, a number nine, obviously. 
Tell you what, the two number threes are having a good battle in this game, Sio Kali and Kalis Fatialofa. Yeah, both are actually playing on the same side and the Vodafone Warriors under 18s this Sunday as well, so a uh, good bit of um, competition between the two boys there. What what see as we see Samuelu pick the ball off the back of the scrum. 12 minutes to play and uh, just again threatening to break through, but this defence from St Paul's has been real tight right the way through. It's been excellent. Yeah, applying um, a little bit of pressure from the inside as well, so um, again as we see some strong contact, they're just continuously moving. No one's, no one's got their feet planted and uh, nice and tight, they're thick around the ruck and obviously branching out a little bit thinner on the edges, but they've been great today. Really good defensively. Say defence wins championships, maybe we're seeing another example of that here in this game. It's for Tonalanga again, looking for some space. Steve Arcel plugging the short side this time as we see Herbert Lonson with that kick. He's just over it just a touch. Skinny in goals here on the number two ground. Yeah, they've always been like that though, so it's nothing new for these boys. Um, you know, again, you know, they played in the grand final last year as well, last sell for the senior A's, but they had some space there too. Um, it was a, a three one opportunity outside there, so maybe quick hands from Harmy there um, could have paid dividends for his side. Missed opportunity for last sell. So here comes some pawns again. Again, you would think they'll work it away up towards the halfway line, and then we'll, they'll be quite happy just to put a kick deep down into D Lassell's territory. Again, make them work out from their own end. Yeah, every attacking set that they've got here is just taking time away from LaSalle to score some points and uh, step closer as we see another error. What have we got here? It's just a loose carry. There's anything to put any doubt about that one as we see Sua lose that one. Was it Sua or was it the winger? Might have been the winger. Number five, eh? Yeah, yeah. Haka Ulu. Hey, good to see LaSalle. the ball there. Over yet for De La Salle. You think they'll have to score on this set though, eh? That's it's, right. There's still time ticking, and um, it's going to be hard for these boys. There's no actual time off here as, as well in, in College Rugby League, so uh, it's going to be going to be tough for these boys uh, if they don't score on this set. Just be uh, compounding a bit more pressure. Well, there's been no cracks in that defensive line either from St Paul's. There's another error, unfortunately for De La Salle, and it's after Ulu who picks up the ball. Everything going right. Defensive pressure creating errors from De La Salle. Balls again, just too good so far in this contest. Yes, young number 14, Compton Purcell on the field now. St. Paul's College. So hopefully we'll see both of these teams in the national competition a bit later on in the year as well. Yeah, that's exciting. There's been a few years that we haven't had that um, now. And both of these sides will probably find themselves in the finals again down there, if they're or thereabouts anyway, competing against each other. And, uh, that's coming up in September, I think. September, October. It's there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's still a bit towards the back end of the year. Good balls. Lost ball there. Jones and yeah, good call by the on-field officials. But he, he, AJ Jones has been good um, today. He does yes. the simple stuff uh, very, very well. And he finds his front on every carry. Gets a nice quick play the ball there. And unfortunately, it's probably one that's got away from him there. But he's been very good today. Yeah, he's been excellent. And uh, you can tell he's got leadership written all over him too, hasn't he? So, yeah, unfortunately for Jones that time. It's pretty hard though. So again, well, they've had some opportunities. Go, 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 go. Like three have completed yeah, yeah, six now for St. Paul, so... Here's the space. Again, though, drifting nicely in defence there was Fayumu for St. Paul. He's the number 11. Now, Fatialofa. Good run from Kairos Fatialofa. He's another player that's impressed today. Yeah, all these players that we're going to see for the Warriors. On Saturday and Sunday, rather game against the, the Tigers of the ball really put their hands up nicely in this game. Yeah, that's exactly what you'd want from, uh, want and expect from those boys to be honest, They're playing at that high level they should be standing out in this contest and um, you know, credit to the boys, they've been, they've been playing well. Just a little bit uncertain there what to do and feel sorry feel for Harmi Herbert lots of there Yeah, just a bit tangled up of what was happening there, um few in and out bodies, maybe a bit of timing, poor timing on, on everyone's part on that side, the situation. 
but you'd like to think that might be might have been their last opportunity there Glenn with seven and a half minutes left unless they can force an error and get a quick try here um, they're doing it tough for the last seven minutes just been too good in this game haven't they both with and without the ball one well, try scored in the second half, scored by Kasaya Sua. Two in the first half, Mafoy and to Antonio. Was he in touch there? The referee called tackle earlier, I think. Lucky to not get a penalty before that late drag out there. That's right. As we see, Kali. Make sure you finish the tackle. Finish strong now, South. Finish strong now. Another good throw. Here, Tao. He's been good today. He has one error. He doesn't promise. He's a pretty interesting character. Going down with Cramp. Piliu towards the halfway. Back here, William Piliu. Uh, Felipe Tolisso, and now we have Zach Stevenson. Stevenson back out there, not out with the tackle. Good run by Stevenson. Go, Chico, go, three markers. Felipe Tolisso has a little dart from dummy half. He very much looks like a natural hooker, doesn't he? Even yes. though we're told he's a converted centre. He's a high, I've seen him play at fullback now. I actually like him at fullback too, to be honest. Um, he was part of the Warriors development side that taught the North Island in the so We've got a runaway try and pick game up late and it's quick, so yeah, dry, dry weather. We probably would have seen a little bit more of him out of nine, but um, he's, he's done well for an outside back to come into the position and play well for Sometimes you're just a kind of class player and you, they can basically play anyway. There's some great defence there. And some ports. There's uh, Kavai who's thrown into touch. Just look at Joey Manu on the weekend there. Mate, I picked him at fullback actually, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I thought he was outstanding. So you look at you look at that and you know he's, he's played on the wing, he's played at centre, obviously he's played at fullback, and you know the way he plays he could easily be a front row or a back row or a lock. He can just about play anywhere other yeah. than hooker, really. Yeah, I know the Warriors were chasing him there at oh, the yeah. start of the year as well. Why wouldn't you? He's just cracked four hundred metres, which is the first time I think it's ever been done in a game, let alone a, an actual international test match. So um, yeah, he's got superstar written all, all over him. Five minutes to play. Coming through from Cully, he is really standing out too. Wow. I actually like Seal and, and his brother Lucky. I, I think they're big, um, you know, promising stars for the future of, of our game. And who knows, maybe we've got the next Joey Marley playing on our field right now. Let's hope so. Here come some calls again as they head up towards the 20. Now they would love to score one more try in this game. Late offload, Philippi Teleso allowed to run down towards the 10. I think St. Paul's will go off if they can score one more try. Maybe Jones can get there. He's close and he's okay. lost it. Just bobbled out of his grasp. Yeah, I think he's been good today, though. Uh, it's obviously a second year late in the half, but played full game. Um, you know, and again, he's, he's tied up well in the middle. And he's just, he, he doesn't look like a big too much of a big body man but he breaks the first tackle nine, nine times out of 100 so good play to have as we see Malachi Tony there getting ready to come back on the field for the last four minutes kick and chase really in the count the bounce might need to favour them it doesn't that goes Antonio for St Paul's good chase coming in there from Tuipolo Tuver for De La Salle Samuelu has been one of De La Salle's best today. He's, his day is done. Charging's already started in the crowd here. And there's his Jones. Good run yes, from AJ again, Jones. Again, the first, first defender again. Hey, you want to make the change or not? Hey, is he okay? Hold on. Good boy. Good to his goes Philippi Telesau. Dart from dummy half. Oh, Wasn't held it. either. Oh, oh, yeah. Dummy half is Isaiah oh, Siu Asua. Here comes St. Paul's again through Sisefo. 
inside the 10 again. What can they execute? One more try. Jones. Here comes Mafoy. Oh, intercepted. Harmy, he's gone. No one's picking him up. And he's going to go all the way. Oh, there's someone coming. Uh, didn't quite get the didn't quite get the angle he was probably looking for there, Marfoy. I think he would have preferred to go right under the post, but still the try is scored and De La Salle fans in the stands go crazy. Yeah, a good effort and attitude area there for by Seal Cully to number three for uh, St. Paul's, but I've got to say, Harmy is a specialist at intercepts. Glenn, he's, he's had a few <laughs> over the last 12 months in particular. I remember a try that he scored in the Oh, oh, we've come all the way back, have we? Or? No, no try. No try. Yeah, he's a, he's a specialist at, at those ones. Uh, I remember it. Oh, it's, it's well, that wasn't knocked on. What's he called? Well, there was definitely no knock on there, so we can only assume he was offside. Well, he's not offside because no, it's, it's not a penalty. I'm guessing they've called it that he's knocked it into, back into the St. Paul's player. Yeah, so, I don't know. I remember him in the 16th grand final on Mount Smart, number one. Army got an intercept and, and ran away with the try there. Uh, Herbert Lotso was unlucky. Yes. Unlucky. Yeah. yeah, if there was a bunker, I reckon the bunker would have given that one a try. Uh, I would have been happy giving it a try. In the end, it might be a St. Paul's try to end the game here. Let's have a look and see what they can cook up through Piliu. Piliu! Oh, great offload. Away. Just lost his footing there, Purcell. St. Paul's going very close to what would be their fourth try of the game. Jones waits one first receiver. It's for Luki Taliso again. Jones, the hands lit. St. Paul's collegiate down the college that time, down that time rather. And uh, we're now inside the last 80 seconds. Yeah, a bit unfortunate there for St. Paul's, but probably a bit of karma there. So you see a little bit of a lazy pass. But yeah, oh, Army, eh? unfortunate. That would have been a good try there. Would have been. One for the highlight reel. Uh, De La Salle got 90 metres. Get him, Get him, Get any points in this game. In fact, that is the Hooter. This is the last play of the game. And some pulls, look how keen they are, all chasing back there. And a dive on the ball and seal it off. And it's St. Paul's win the Auckland title again. 2022 champions. St. Paul's College, uh, college have got the job done again. And they shut out De La Salle by 16 points to nil. Tries in the game, Mafoy, Antonio, and Sua. And perhaps and arguably the most impressive stat of all is they kept their opponents to nil today. Yeah, again, uh, championships are built off the back of defence there, Glenn, and um, I've got to say, St. Paul's will take the hand off to when they defend it really, really well today's contest, and they definitely deserve the final there. But uh, seeing a few sad bodies out there from De Marcel again, congratulations to both sides. Um, those of you that don't know, Marcel have actually come from second division last year, won that, and it's their first year in Premier First 13. So for them to make the grand final here has been outstanding in their first year. As you see, St. Paul's, fellas here, boys, make sure you take your boots off, look after the track, please. <laughs> means a lot doesn't it there's some great scenes there and St Paul's I know they have a really rich history in this sport but they're not the biggest school in Auckland nestled in the, in the heartland of Grey Lynn there they've certainly produced a number one for team again they're there or thereabouts pretty much almost every year aren't they so scenes here at Mount Smart number two. Happy days for St Paul's. They win this game by 16 points to nil. We'll be back to wrap it up and have the presentation for you in just a moment.
ball from the Texan. Tony Day's rookie covering your selection. Just that you can do the missing. Sixteen points to nil. The final score to St Paul's College over De La Salle, and really are wonderful scenes. And we've seen the De La Salle team embraced by their supporters as well. Just coming up short in this game today. Yeah, again, Glenn, well done to both sides, man. It's a great yeah. grand final. All four of them have been great today, and um, you know St Paul's heavyweight. Uh, College team in this competition, but you know, De La Salle can you know hold their heads high for for their performance this year as well. To get to the big stage here is an awesome achievement. Yes, yeah, certainly is. And today, just too good. St Paul's. I mean, as we touched on just before the ad break, their defence was absolutely really stellar. I thought in this game, and uh, De La Salle just got no space. No, I don't think they got a clean line break. They were unlucky yeah. with that try near the end of the game. But by then, they were playing catch-up and they weren't, weren't going they to They were. There was the other opportunity as well where um, they had the shift to the left-hand side and ball knocked down by St. Paul's and they ended up going up and scoring that, that third try. So definitely a bit unlucky. There were two 12-point opportunities there for those boys. So could have been a different different story. So we see one of the highlights. I believe this is the only try in the second half, I think it was. And yes. William Pilliu, I thought he played outstanding today, just holding up that defender. Getting Kalis Fatialofa caught in. And number four. Yeah, Sua. Kasaya Sua going in for his first full pointer for today. Yeah, that was the only try of the second half. Mafoy and Antonio got the tries in the first half. Just taking advantage of the slightest of opportunities too in those uh, two moments. Man, when, it, when it comes to grand finals, it's all about moments, you know what I mean? So if you can capture those and, and, and take your opportunities when they come, more likely than not, you're, you're going to be coming away with some good, good points at the end of it. So... Look at the calibre of boys there. There's Georgie Carmont, Jason McCarthy there as well, um, you know, one of the premier managers. I believe he's in the Warriors system as well, has been previously. So, but yeah, Jason McCarthy, the uh, the manager of Point Chef. Yeah, yeah, isn't there, he? yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. high calibre of boys there. Yeah, good to see George Carmont still coaching De La Salle. He was a fine player in his day. Yeah, bring back the long hair, Georgie. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So the team's lining up for the presentation now. They're not too far away from that. Be interesting to see who the MVP is of the game as well. Yeah, it could have, could have been a, a, a couple options there. A, um, yeah, AJ Jones was um, one for me. I thought um, number nine, Jericho, um, as well, was very good. And also number one, William Pilliu. Um, Let's go to the presentation now. Pause, boys, for, um, you deserve it, eh? This is for you. So, um, you worked for it. Props to you for um, showing us how to do it, eh? So my brothers, you know, it's just a sit back. You know, we'll come back stronger, but yeah, that's us. Just keep working, Nick, on the ground. That's us. Uh, and the captain of St. Paul's, if you'd like to come up and say a few words. So, <laughs> boys. Um, I'd like to thank all the supporters for coming out today. Uh, it's always good to have. Um, People behind our backs when we play the sport that we love. Um, to the last out team, uh, it's not often that people come up from a different grade eh? they make it to the one day final. So, good on you for making it here. But uh, we'll see you guys back at next. So, our boys, these are people looking at our uh, down for A eh, boys. But you fought me today, you should watch off. But we want that back at next as well. So, I'm here on it. Um, the game finished on a uh, good note. 
So I hope that all the crowd get him safely. Don't be in your um, silly behavior around here, please. And I'll uh, get him safe. Oh, sweet. We'll also now announce the most valuable player from the grand final. Your MVP for 2022, William Pilu. I'd now like to uh, call up the CEO of uh, College Sport Auckland, Mark Barlow, to present the College Rugby League First 13 Premier Winners for 2022. Your winner, St Paul's College. Thanks ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's uh, pictures. There is two exits, in, uh, two exits, one behind you and the main one that you came in. Safe travels home and thank you very much. We'll see you all next year. Well, there we are folks. St Paul's College win the Auckland title for 2022. Just too good for De La Salle in this grand final. Congratulations to all the teams that won earlier today too, TJ. Really good day of rugby league. Yeah, it has been, man. Weather, weather played its part. It didn't, <laughs> didn't buck it down too much, I guess. But uh, no, even still, four great games of uh, college rugby league. It's been a pleasure here calling it with yourself and Wade this afternoon as well. 100%. And well done to Auckland Girls Grammar who won that Auckland uh, women's title as well. So well done. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for your company. We'll catch you for more uh, ARL uh, very soon. I think we're uh, we're up at Hibiscus Coast for a Fox Memorial game yeah, this Hibiscus weekend. Hibiscus Coast this weekend. That's yeah. a, a fair bit of a travel there. It's yeah. about an hour and a half away. But um, no, nah, they look like yeah, they've got Jeremiah Pye coaching up there this year. They're going to be a good good side to watch as well. So thanks for watching, guys, and congratulations to St Paul's winners of the Auckland Premier Boys title for 2022. Yeah!